Yep. You guys are probably gonna kill me for this. <laughs> We're beautiful. My regular Niffler. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a top 10 Harry Potter movie video. I know, I know, we don't really have 10 Harry Potter movies, but I actually will be including Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and the stage play that shall not be named. I'll be basing this review on cinematography, directing, acting, and just plot in general. Just so you all know, this video is actually going to be very hard for me because not only do I have a very controversial opinion about the Harry Potter series, but it's also very hard for me to rank my favorite series of all time into categories and say that one is better than the other. So I need your help with this video to be lenient with me and not murder me in the comments down below. Let's get to it! Number 10. My least favorite Harry Potter thing is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. My only problem with Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is actually just the plot. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's horrible. I don't even want to talk about it. In terms of style and stage direction, it's actually really brilliant. I haven't gotten the pleasure to see it yet, but from what I've heard, it's really, really cool, and I definitely will be seeing it sometime in the near future. Number nine. This one may surprise you, is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I think of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire as the in-between stage between the really amazing Harry Potter series and the okay Harry Potter series. As a kid, I used to love the first Harry Potter films, but as I started to grow up, I felt like the ones that stuck with me more and the ones that I ended up watching were the later editions. The Goblet of Fire to me stands on the bottom of that list because I feel like it strays too far from the books. In terms of direction and cinematography, I feel like this movie is all over the place. Goblet of Fire is the first movie that takes Harry Potter and turns it into an adult film franchise. You have a scene with the Yule Ball that didn't really feel like it fit well in the film, even though in the book I actually felt fit really well. Then you have the resurrection of Voldemort, which was actually one of the greatest scenes in maybe all of the Harry Potter franchise but everything before that was just a stretch of annoyance to me, really. Even the Quidditch World Cup in the beginning of the book was really skimmed over in the movies, and I felt like that was something that, as a fan, I missed out on. Also, another thing that really gets on my nerves is everybody's hair in this movie. I feel like the director of the film walked in on set and was like, you know what, you grow your hair out, you grow your hair out, and bam, 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 you have a movie that looks like it doesn't even belong in a series. Number eight is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Don't get me wrong, this film brings me so much nostalgia, but if I'm being honest, I really grew out of it these past couple of years. Of course, this was the beginning that set the film franchise into absolute success, which I cannot be more thankful for. I feel like this movie would have been number one at the time when it was released. The visual effects in this movie are absolute crap. The CGI and the Quidditch matches are completely horrifying, but we have to remember that these are the movie adaptations and not the books. If it were the books, this might have been number one, but most of the props to this movie need to go to J.K. Rowling for coming up with such a brilliant story. Which leads me to my next problem, the child actors. For real, I love Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson, but their acting in this movie was absolutely atrocious, and some of the scenes are just so overacted, and the voiceovers that Christopher Columbus used in these movies is so obvious, and I see it every time I watch the movies back. Which is saying a lot since I just watch them over and over and over again. On the positive side, Side, we have a lot of positives that really outweigh the negatives, and including a feeling of magic that you get as you watch this film. One thing that all directors have managed to do really well with these Harry Potter films is that they've allowed you to become more immersed in the movies as we go along, and that's a really hard thing to do. And if I could, I would not change this movie for anything, even with all of its flaws, because it is just a reminder how far they've come now with the installments of Fantastic Beasts and how amazing that looks. Number seven. Harry Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I need to clarify that just because this is number 8 on my top 10 list, it is definitely not bad in any way. I actually have no flaws with this film. This is the part of my top 10 list when all of the movies are just brilliant from here forward. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets just takes that magic that you knew and loved from the first movie and escalates it. This film brings you the introduction of Tom Riddle, Voldemort's past, and the Chamber of Secrets, literally. The CGI they used in this film was so much better than the first one. The introduction of the basilisk and the secret, secret introduction of the diary that turned out to be a horcrux is just phenomenal. Also, this is the movie where we see Ginny Weasley for the first time and Ginny Weasley is always a win. And of course, the number one thing about this movie 
is how well the kids grew as actors. In the time span of one year, these kids went from really, really horrible actors to better actors. It feels like a breath of fresh air watching Chamber of Secrets after Philosopher's Stone and seeing how well they cleaned everything up and made it look 10 times better. Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. I know, I know, I know, you're gonna kill me. How could you put Fantastic Beasts before any of the other Harry Potter films? Well, I'll tell you how. CGI, visual effects, and David Yates as a director. This is the first of the Harry Potter series in which we experience life outside of Britain. It also gives us an introduction to a brilliant protagonist and a brilliant set of four characters, which I love and obsess over more than I probably should. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is an unbelievably directed film by David Yates. The great thing about Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is its choice of location in New York and its time in the 1920s. It's a primary example of how changing dates in a movie series or introducing different lifestyles can really broaden the horizon on a series, and it really does that with this film. There's also a really great use of a color palette in this film. This whole 20s vintage vibe you get mixed with the magic that J.K. Rowling has installed in these films is just phenomenal, and it mixes so well together. This movie also won the first Oscar for the Harry Potter franchise, which went to costume design, which I completely agree with. Number six, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. This movie, again, is directed by David Yates and introduces us to characters like Luna Lovegood, Bellatrix Lestrange, and Dolores Umbridge. Not only is Bellatrix Lestrange one of my favorite Harry Potter characters, but she is portrayed by Helena Bonham Carter, who brilliantly adds weight to this film series. She is a horrific character who practically carries the Death Eater on her shoulders. This movie also introduces us to the plotline of Dumbledore's army, one of my favorite plotlines in all of the Harry Potter universe. This is when Harry becomes the teacher and starts to teach the kids about how to defend themselves against the dark forces that are probably going to try and kill them within the next coming movies. This movie also gives us the introduction to the Department of Mysteries, which looks so cool, and then with that you get the Battle of the Department of Mysteries, which is the first big battle between any characters in the Harry Potter franchise. With that, you get to see a brilliant, brilliant fight between Dumbledore and Voldemort, and you also get to see these kids take on themselves for once and become these heroes that a franchise needs to grow and be loved. And I cannot stress enough how amazingly emotional this film is. It's really where Harry begins to experience his angst and start to face his inner demons because where we left Harry off previously, Cedric Diggory has just died in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and because of that, this movie carries a lot of weight to it, and we really get to explore the emotional side of these characters. It's the first film that chooses to do so. Number five. This next film was so hard for me to choose where I want to put it in this list, but I found a place for it that just works almost perfectly. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. You guys are gonna murder me in the comment section, but I actually love Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, and I love it with all my heart. This movie is the definition of a build-up, and that's why most people didn't enjoy it as much as the other films, but I love the drama and the color palette used in this film. For starters, there is almost no happiness and no light in this movie, which really works because you see that these characters are going off on an adventure to find these horcruxes to kill the greatest dark wizard of all time. This movie is not comedic, it is not that magical, it really is raw, and that is something that should have been instilled in the Harry Potter movies much earlier. This movie is great because it actually takes itself seriously, not to mention the horrific ending scene in Malfoy Manor in which Bellatrix tortures Hermione and murders Dobby the house elf. And if I'm being honest, this movie freaks me out so much. Not only because it carries weight to it, but you actually find yourself immersed with these characters and you understand the pain and suffering that they're going through. So whenever something happens to them, you genuinely start to freak out. The wide shots that they use in this film are unbelievable. They were using on-set locations as opposed to a studio where they would usually film in Hogwarts. So much effort was put into this film, also by the actors Emma Watson, Rupert Grint, and Daniel Radcliffe. This is the first movie where you're basically stuck with them for two hours. As they are off camping for most of the film, you really get to see these characters unwind and fall out, and it really takes you on an emotional journey from start to finish, and is a brilliant setup for the next movies to come. Number three. My third favorite Harry Potter movie is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. This is a film that really tore the Harry Potter fandom in two, as some people loved it and some people absolutely hated it. 
Some people argued that the movie strayed really far from the books, and all this time, I just sat here like, no, I really, really like it. Of course, this movie is unbelievably heavy. It deals with the death of Albus Dumbledore. Also, the best part of this movie is Alan Rickman as Snape. While some may say that Alan Rickman's acting can be shown best in The Deathly Hallows Part 2, I would say that Half-Blood Prince literally in the name, is unbelievably evident of that. Because with his character, in this movie in particular, it leaves the audience wondering constantly whether he's on the good side or the bad side, and by the end of the film, we literally has to end up killing the most beloved character in the Harry Potter franchise. It's just unbelievable how well Alan Rickman as an actor carries that. And because of that, this film is so high up on my list because it deserves to be. I listen to the soundtrack of this movie when I study for exams, because it is so unbelievably beautiful. This movie also has a color palette to it of mostly grays, whites, and blacks that just mix so well together and really are an example of the state that the wizarding world is in now because Lord Voldemort has literally resurrected. This and Deathly Hallows Part 1 fit so well for me. This movie is also when we're first introduced to the concept of Horcruxes and Voldemort splitting his soul. It's also our introduction to the character of Professor Slughorn, which is really adorable to me, as he is one of the only good Slytherins that we know from the Harry Potter movies. Number 2. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Oh my god. Oh my god. This film is the first to completely rip off and obliterate the child-friendly stamp on the Harry Potter series. The first two films directed by Christopher Columbus were so close to the books in terms of content that the third movie came along and just surprised everybody with a much darker tone that gives Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban the ability to become so much more darker and bleaker. It's also the first film to include Gary Oldman as Sirius Black, which obviously which has always been one of my favorite actors in the Harry Potter series because he portrays the character so well. And the plot line about the Prisoner of Azkaban, Sirius Black, who has escaped and is now out to kill Harry Potter, and the twist at the end that it was actually Ron's rat, Peter Pettigrew, who betrayed Harry's parents and sold them out to Lord Voldemort, is unbelievably genius. This is a movie where Harry becomes much more aware of magic, so that element of surprise doesn't need to be implemented in it as much, and it was not. And for that, I grant Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban my second spot in my top 10 favorite Harry Potter movies. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, number one. You probably all saw this coming from miles away, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. This is by far the greatest Harry Potter film of all time, and it cannot be beat. It just cannot be beat. The Harry Potter fandom unanimously just agrees with this one. For once, most of the props to this movie just go to how amazing the Harry Potter team was in concluding an eight-movie series. The weight that this movie carries, the emotions, the battles, the deaths, the heartache that this movie implements into its plot lines is just gut-wrenching, and it's beautiful. The plotline of the prince's tale and finding out the truth about Snape's allegiance. The death of characters like Snape, Remus Lupin, Fred Weasley. This movie in particular really shines in terms of visual effects and unbelievably brilliant battles between Harry and Voldemort and the good and the bad. Seeing this school that you've now known and loved for 10 years just get blown up repeatedly, blow after blow, is really something. And of course, the acting in this movie is unbelievably. Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter really shines the most in this film because he is he is constantly faced with these tasks between choosing what is right and what is easy, whether he should flee or stand and fight. It deserves the number one spot in my top 10 favorite Harry Potter movies list. There you have it guys, that was my video on my top 10 favorite Harry Potter movies. If you like this video and you want to see more Harry Potter content, please leave a like and a comment down below and subscribe to my channel so you can stay updated. Bye guys!